Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Let me say it again. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Happy everyone. Sabbath. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. I'm going to invite us all to stand. Those of you who are online joining us, just pause and pray with us just for a little bit. So is it okay? Let's just pray. And we're going to talk to God. Just remind yourself of the sacrifice daily that he gave for you to have your breath right now in this place. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to give you thanks. We, we just, and it, it's not even enough, Father. We can't say thank you enough for how much you've given up just so that we can be here in this space and even have the nerve sometimes to complain about the lives we have, Father. We thank you so much, though, for everything you've given to us, starting with just waking us up to see this beautiful day. And God, we pray right now that in the space we're in, we'll remember the sacrifice for us on the cross because it was our sin, our iniquities, our transgressions that you bore. And, and, and it was all of humankind, Father. So I, I can't imagine what that must have felt like and even being separated from Jesus, Father, for just a few moments must have been painful, but you did it all for us. And your son Jesus loved us so much that none of us, none of us would perish. So Lord, we thank you so much. Help us in this moment to give all the praise, glory, and honor to you because you have won the victory for us. In Jesus' name, let all the victorious people of God say amen, amen and amen. This song we're going to sing says, we have overcome. I don't know if you're an overcomer today, but if you are, just wave your hands. Clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Put a smile on your face. A shout of praise on your lips as we sing. Thanks be to God. Here we go. Sing. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in his name. Thanks be to God. It's okay to put your hands together. Is us to win. Yeah. Thanks be to God who always calls.
come with the blood, the blood of the lamb. There is power in the blood. I don't know if one or two or three of us can, can testify that we know for ourselves there is power in the blood. You got healing over these last few years. You've gotten deliverance over these last few years from whatever it is. There's power in the blood. Come on. It's okay to put your hands together. Sing it with a sing. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you all be Would you all be free from the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. shed for you. So we're going to sing about that blood that will never, ever lose its power. Regardless of how dirty we are, that blood will still cover us.
is so worthy. Amen. And happy Sabbath, church. Oh, my goodness. What an awesome view. If you guys could only be up here to see the people in the house of the Lord this morning. It is so good to see you all. Happy Sabbath. Those of you watching online, welcome to this wonderful Sabbath day. It is crucifixion and resurrection weekend. It is a high Sabbath. We have baptism today. Some souls will be giving their lives to Christ today, and it's just such an awesome day. Welcome, all of you. My goodness, it's so good to see you guys. I'm sure if you had no mask on, I would be able to see all the smiling faces, but I can see it in the eyes. I can see it in the eyes. You know, I don't even think I need to make this announcement because this sanctuary is full already today for second service. But if you haven't had a chance to come, you can still come and join us on a weekly basis. We are open. We are worshiping. We are praising God each and every Sabbath. If you guys will see that we have removed those um, signs off of the pews, we're still wearing masks, but we're doing our best to social distance. But we are ready to worship and praise the Lord week after week. Thank you guys for being here. We have a lot of announcements today, so I'm going to try to run as fast as I can because I'm going to lose my breath just as I did earlier today. So let's get these announcements going. All right, we can go past that. Paradigm shift. If this is not your first Sabbath, you know what we're doing in 2022. But if it is your first Sabbath, we want everybody, every single person, you're watching online or you're coming into the, the sanctuary week after week, we want to remind you week after week because this is our focus for 2022. We are shifting the way we do things because we are wanting to love God, love people, and go out and make disciples each and every Sabbath using our discipleship process of connecting and growing, serving and going. And we are doing this Sabbath after Sabbath with our, with our Bible studies we're connecting, with our prayer lines every um Every morning we're connecting with our, um, with our going out and feeding the homeless. We're serving. We're going. So Plantation Church is doing this week after week. We invite you guys to join us in this paradigm shift in 2022. One of the Bible studies, the few Bible studies that take place on Sabbath afternoon is with Brother Elder Alex at 3.50 p.m. You can join this uh, via Zoom. This is one of two or three that takes place every Sabbath afternoon. So if you are interested in a Bible study, log on to this. The Zoom information is there. And I'm going to tell you another place where you can find this information as we go through these announcements. The Bible on Mass. Tomorrow we continue. If you have not been participating, I encourage you to go to YouTube and um, sign up for the notification so that you'll get a reminder when it's time for you to tune in to the Bible Unmasked with Pastor Dexter Thomas and his wife, Elizabeth. Tomorrow they are interviewing the Richardsons, and they will be going through the Book of Solomon during their um, Bible study time. So we encourage you guys to join in that um, tomorrow evening at 730. The youth ministry is doing a clothe thing drive. We encourage you guys to bring in your clothes. There's a box in the lobby that was put there today for you to be able to drop off your gently used clothes or maybe your brand new clothes. Um, I said earlier, I don't know about some of you guys, but um, it's been two years. Some people have bought clothes and they haven't been able to fit in it because we've had that, um, that COVID expansion. Um, I know I did. Those of you who know me, you know I did. Um, so I've had to give away some things. So if you fall under that, we encourage you to please bring in those clothes, drop them in that, uh, that box in the lobby, and it will go to benefit someone who truly needs it. So this drive is happening this week up until the 30th of this month. But today, the children's ministry, youth ministry, as they do on a regular basis, I believe twice a month, they're going out to downtown Fort Lauderdale to feed and clothe the homeless. So if you want to participate in that, 
please join them at 2 p.m. The address is there, um, downtown Fort Lauderdale, next to the library and next to the McDonald's near the, the, the train or the bus station on the left, and you can participate with them. Next week, the women's ministry is having a chat and chew. Throughout COVID, they've had several of these. If you're looking for connection, we encourage you to join the women's ministry for this chat and chew at 2 p.m. next week. Um, it's via Zoom. Yes? No, it's at Seminole Park. I'm sorry. It's at Seminole Park next week. So um, for more information, call the numbers on there. They'll tell you whether you need to bring your own food. Bring your own food, Deborah, or no? Oh, look at that. They're providing food, too. So just come and chat and chew with the ladies at Plantation next week, Sabbath. Also, um, the men's ministry next Saturday evening will be having a night of bowling. Um, we always have fun when we go bowling. So men, bring your sons, bring your grandsons, bring your nephews, bring your cousins, bring your neighbors. Come and have some fun with us. Bowling at 8 p.m. next week, Saturday. It is at Spares Bowling off of South University Drive in Davies. So that is south of uh, 595. Come and join us. We're going to have a whole lot of fun. Food, bowling, fellowship. It's always a great time. Children's Church next week. I'm sorry, on the 30th of April. Um, the children's ministry continues to meet the spiritual needs of our young people, our children here at Plantation. And they're doing it at the park, at Volunteer Park, next week, Saturday. You have time, I'm sorry, not next week, Saturday, but the 30th. You still have time to come in and worship with us here in the sanctuary. And then take your kids to the park for this children's church at 2 p.m. next Saturday. They have fun. They praise and worship. They eat and just have a good time in the Lord at the park week after week. Our worship expo is taking place on the 30th. If you have been watching Plantation or you have been here in the sanctuary and you just, you're just curious about everything that happens behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, whether it's the praise and worship, the musicians, the lights, the camera, the, the sound, come out and um, just be introduced to all of these different um, opportunities to praise and worship God and see if your talent fits in with what is happening here. We encourage you guys to come and learn about that and be part of this 2 p.m. on April 30th, right after the second service. Uh, Sports Day Revival, uh, end of school. So as the school year winds down, and uh, the kids are getting ready for summer. This is an awesome program, youth ministry, I'm sorry, children's ministry, youth ministry, and collaboration with all other ministries here at Plantation. We have a great time. Last year was fun. We had the pastors out there. We had the ministry leaders out there and the young people. They brought their friends and their neighbors and there were races, there were prizes, there was food, there was fellowship. And there was so much fun. So we encourage you guys. This is happening on May 1st. Mark your calendar. 10 p.m. starting at, uh, at um, Volunteer Park. There will be, there's going to be a 5K run. There's going to be a, a bike ride and just so much more. So we encourage you to come out, have some fun with your brothers and sisters. Invite your neighbors and your friends. Uh, and we're winding down, so we want to remind all of our church members, if you had not had a chance yet, please update your profile with us so we have an accurate listing of our members. Um, if you're watching online, just put your phone up to that uh, QR code. If you're here in the sanctuary, that is on the table out there in the lobby. Just put your phone up there, and you'll have a chance to update your information. And lastly, we want to remind you of the online bulletin on the Bible app. It's more than just the Bible, which is the best part of it, but you can also get so much more information about plantation. You can get information about the sermon. You can write sermon notes from that app. You can get a listing of all the announcements that I just made on that app so that you don't have to try to remember. So we encourage you guys to use the online bulletin on the Bible app. 
I think that's it. Wow. Man, you guys, again, you guys look so good. It's so good to see so many people. I can recognize a lot of folks with your mask on. It is so good to see everyone. We pray that everybody here, everybody watching, will have a wonderful time in the Lord today. And the blessings that God has in store for you will not be lost. Because you're not here by accident. You're not here by chance. He ordained it since last week that you would be here this morning to worship him and to receive the blessing that he has for you. But also, be open to how God is going to use you to bless someone else today. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, we thank you so much for what you have done. We thank you, Lord, for the cross. We thank you for the person and the power and the purpose of your cross. And this morning, Lord, as we worship you, as we praise your name, we just want to lift everything up to you. May the praises, may the songs, may the prayer, may everything that is done here today be acceptable in your sight, Lord. And may each person in this building and watching online be open to receive that blessing, that specific, that special blessing that you have for them today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I'm so happy to see here a lot of people today. I'm happy to see some young boys and girls and some older boys and girls. And uh, for the ones watching online, all the boys and girls of all ages, I wish like a very special happy Sabbath, Shabbat Shalom, Feliz Sabado. Um, the story I bring today is a real one. I just changed the name of the people in the story. And it taught me a couple of very important lessons that one of them is not to take for granted of what we have, all the gifts that we have. And the power of the word. Words can build up or destroy. I always believe that. And the power of the word of God is the real power that transforms lives. So there is this woman named, her name is Maria in the story. And she got pregnant and she was doing her regular visits to the doctor. At one point, in one of the tests that she had done, the doctor found something wrong with the pregnancy with the baby. And they delivered the notice, the, this news that the baby was have a malformation in the body, like he didn't have arms. So like very tiny arms, something was wrong. So the doctor told her, you have an option, Maria, to terminate your pregnancy, you know, because the baby have a malformation and you have this right. So she's was upset at the moment, but she told the doctor, I'm going home. Think about it. Now, Maria was a woman that had a faith, strong faith in God. That her mother told her all her life, we can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. That's in Philippians 4, 13. And she had this as a guidance in her life, and she was praying and asking God to help her to face this challenge because she decided she would have the baby. So when the baby born, she named the baby Jason. And she, of course, gave him to the Lord and asked the Lord every day because she loved him so much. And she was beautiful to her, but she knew she had a challenge with this baby. And she was... Raising him 
with the same powerful words that her mother raised her, say, we, Jason, can do all things through Christ who is strengthening us. So she realized as he was growing up that he could do a lot of things with his feet. So she kind of gave him some cranes and, and, and pencils, and she realized that he could actually even like write and paint. So long story short, when he was growing up, he just became an artist, and he could paint beautiful pictures. And this is a real story. It's amazing to see his work. You could never tell that was somebody that was painting with his feet. So I have a special helper today that she's going to show here another special verse that actually Maria have this in his room growing up, because this is also another verse that she used that is very powerful. In Mark 10, 27, Jesus was saying to the disciple that brought a situation that was impossible to man. And then Jesus said, yes, with man is impossible, but not for God. Because for with God, all things are possible. Can you repeat for me, this verse, I want to hear you guys. For Amen. And I noticed that for with God, if we put here out without God, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible, including, and the most important impossibility for men that I consider is death, right? So I'm pretty sure somebody here is pretty alive, but we all here and there, we, we think about death and death. I mean, death, death and death. And maybe you lost somebody, maybe somebody that's watching me, you lost somebody that you love, you know, with everything going on. And, and those moments truly, because we can only rely on the promise of God because when Jesus came, and pay the price for our death so we can have eternal life. There is now nothing really impossible for us anymore if you believe in that promise. So on the other side of this promise is Jesus Christ our King. He is the one that fulfills and is our possible in all the impossibles. And with him, we have eternal life. And this weekend is a very special weekend for not only the body of Christ, but also for my uh, Jewish friend. Uh, one of my Jewish friends sent me the message yesterday. I saw it was beautiful. He was saying that together we're celebrating this weekend the Passover and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which both of them have a, a beautiful meaning. Passover, that when the people of God came out of Egypt um, for freedom. And our freedom from death. Because through him, we have eternal life. So I wish from all my heart that you guys receive that promise and believe. Because for God, all things are possible with him. Happy Sabbath. morning and happy Sabbath church. It's time to worship the Lord with a tithe and offering. In the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 35, the apostle Paul was reminding the early church and us today about the importance of giving. He said, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It is more blessed to give 
than to receive. We worship with our resources in a disciplined way because we emulate the, an orderly God. One strict feature of God's creation is its well organized design. The daily, weekly, and monthly patterns speak loudly about the designer, the creator, and sustainer of our universe. As believers, we define ourselves as being his image and God being our model. Therefore, let us be like him in worship and giving. The different ways of giving is through Zell, the mail, and the Adventist giving up. Let us pray. Father and God, we're truly thankful for everything that you have done for us. Thank you for your many blessings that you continue to provide for us and that we return what's yours and also give a liberal offering. May your tithe and offering today go forth for the finish of your, finishing of your gospel. This and other mercies we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. sun where to stand in the morning and who told the ocean you can only come so far who showed the moon where to hide till evening whose words alone a falling star Well I know my Redeemer lives I know my Redeemer lives All of creation testifies
Today is another happy day in your plantation sent for the Adventist church. Today is the day of new beginnings. In a moment, seven individuals will be baptized by immersion. They'll have all their sins washed away. They'll receive the Holy Spirit, begin new lives with Christ. Barbara Samuels and Celius Casey, who is all the way in New York, um, have studied with five of the individuals who will be baptized. They are children, our children, from the Sawgrass Adventist School. And I will introduce the two adults who are also um, starting new lives with Christ. Having said that, I want to ask Sister Elder Barbara Samuels to introduce the very first individual to be baptized. Joy is just so, so much joy. Um, when children have come to know God, just, just as he is, it makes a major difference in their lives for the rest of their lives. I see when kids give their life to God as actually snatching them out of the enemy's camp and teaching them how to walk in in the way of Christ. So our first um, candidate is Samuela Adelson. And Samuela was born, and while she walks to the pool, I'll share. Samuel Adelson was born to Alicia and Henry Adelson on July 12, 2011 in the city of Fort Lauderdale. She's a fifth grade student at our Sawgrass Adventist School. Samuela, where she enjoys science, as her subject. It is fun, she says, and I enjoy making projects. Samuel I would like to be a nurse so that she can help people feel better. As a hobby, she watches shows, different shows on the TV. Her favorite Bible verse is Psalms 119, 105. It sh and she says, it shows me that God's world is a lamp unto my feet, that his word is a lamp unto her feet and a light unto her path. She says, I want to be baptized so I can be saved. So if I die, and when I die, I can go to heaven. Samuela. And we're inviting the parents and those that are supporting Samuela. They can always come up to the front to be with her. And our next, our next candidate is Marley Germain. Manu, Marley Jane, Germain, and as she walks, she was born to Manuka and Ger, Manuka and Germain on November 10th, 2009, in the city of Fort Lauderdale. At present, she attends Sawgrass Adventist School. She's also in the fifth grade, a student, and her favorite subject is math. Marley would like to be an interior designer when she grows up. She enjoys watching interior designing on TV, and she also likes collecting Lego friends. And her favorite verse of the Bible is John 3, 16. And she says that as it talks about how God gave his son to save her, recently Marley was attending a series entitled Falling in Love with Jesus, and it prompted her to be baptized as she wants to be closer to Jesus. Our next candidate is Edrine. And as Edrine walks, Edrine was born to Esther and Edza Joseph on April 12, 2010 in Plantation, Florida. She presently is a sixth grade student at Sawgrass Adventist School. Her favorite subject is art. When she grows up, Edrine would like to be a pediatrician and she likes taking care of kids for leisure. 
I like to make cool moves, she says. This is why gymnastics is my hobby. Her favorite Bible text is Psalms 100. Since it is the first Bible passage she memorized, Adrena wants to be baptized because she wants to be closer to God. is her sister, Maya. Maya was born to Esther and Edza Joseph on April 19, 2011, here in Plantation, Florida. Currently, she is in the fifth grade at Sawgrass Adventist School, and her favorite subject is math. She finds it easy, and she says, Maya enjoys talking and would like to be a lawyer in the future. She likes doing hair as a hobby, and Maya's favorite text is Psalms 23. I want to give my life to Christ, she says. That's why I'm getting baptized today. Carillo Henry. And as she goes, Leolin was born on February 5th, 2011. She's 11 years old. She was born in Fort Lauderdale. And her parents, Leonard Henry and Marilyn Carillo Henry, um, both set from, J from Jamaica and the Philippines. Leolin attends Sawgrass Adventist School and is in the fifth grade. Her favorite subject, she says, is math and reading. Her hobbies include art, piano, and playing the basketball. She says when she grows up, she wants to be a doctor, and she wants to help people heal. But she says not only heal, but experience the joy of God. She says, I want to get baptized because I want to be a new person. Only God can help me start a new life. Her favorite Bible verse is John 3, 16. And she says when she thinks how God gave up his only son for her, that makes her want to give her life to him. She loves to sing. When she grows up, she says she wants to sing and sing in the group and serve God in that area. You know, when I asked Leilin earlier on, I said, what do you want to share? She was telling. She said, she said she wants to share the message that you should put your head towards the light and the shadows will fall behind you. She said, and when she said that, it's profound. She says, keep your heads towards the light. Don't care about the shadows. They will fall behind you. And she says her parents inspires her to want to serve God and to do more. Amen. 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 I just observed how enthusiastic she is. She, she raced, she literally raced into the, into the pool. Uh, Leah Lynn, because you love Jesus. We now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. In the name of the sweet Holy Spirit, let all God's people say, Amen. And now we have our first adult, Fitz. Fitz Clowden. Fitz. Gerald Clowden. While he's coming, I want you to know that the next scheduled baptism is on Sabbath, June 18, two months from now. Now is the time, everybody. Now is the time. You are someone that you know wants a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. Now is the time to come to Jesus. Um, by the way, we may be having a baptism um, if we join with Merge 
next Sabbath, next Friday evening at about 7 o'clock on Fort Lauderdale Beach. So if you have an interest, uh, you can speak to me, Alex Graham, Barbara Samuels. Of course, the pastors, Pastor Rose, Pastor Jen, Pastor Kev, or one of the elders. And we will be delighted to work with you, to connect you, so you can deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ. So we're waiting now for Fitz Cloudon to come. And after Fitz, we'll have one more individual. So Fitz is, here we are. Fitz, come on in. Fitz was born on the southern Caribbean island of St. Vincent in the West Indies. As a small child, Fitz would go to the Anglican church every Sunday with his grandmother. Fitz remembers wearing the red, white, red and white when he was an altar boy from the time he was 12 years old until he was 14 years old. Fitz came to America to be with his mother when he was about 18 years old. He visited churches, but he didn't like them, so he stopped going to church. He stayed home and read his Bible whenever he got a chance. But one day Fitz evaluated the way that things were going in his life. He felt that his life needed to be turned around. And he felt that the only one who could turn his life around for the better is Jesus. So he prayed more to the God who has never failed him and never will. Fitz wants to be baptized now because he's seeking a complete change in his life. He wants to give his life completely to his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to follow where God leads. As he starts his new life with Christ, Fitz wants to trust God more instead of playing the lottery from time to time. Fitz has been a drummer in the band most of his life. He has a recording studio in his home. He can't wait to discover how God can use his musical talents in his service going forward. Fitz Cloudon. Fitz, because you love Jesus, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the sweet Holy Spirit, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. The number seven is a number of completeness. And our seventh individual who is giving her life completely to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today is Joanna Miller. Joanna Miller. Joanna was born in Kingston, Jamaica, West Indies. Joanna grew up in the church. She had to be in the church because her father was pastor of the New Testament Church of God. Um, he was the overseer, actually. It was hard being a preacher's, a pastor's child, especially when you're a teenager. Joanna, Joanna wants to get away from church, 
from the church people. So when she got to be 18 years old, she left for New York, stopped going to church, and partied seven days a week. She would have partied eight days, but there's no eighth day. So, <laughs> so we stopped at seven. When Joanna got pregnant with her son, things started changing in her. She felt a calling. She didn't want to party anymore. She moved to Florida sometime after her son was born. She found a non-denominational church. She started serving in the church. But then the pandemic hit. And when that happened, she stopped going to church. She, her relationship with Christ suffered. And that may be happening to a lot of people because of this pandemic. However, Joanna wanted God. She was seeking him when she met Pat Cole at work. Is Pat Cole here today? Pat Cole, would you stand up? There is Patricia Cole, Pat Cole. So as you go, make disciples. And um, Pat was at work and met uh, Joanna. And Pat guided her and put her in touch with Adventists who were on fire for Jesus, fellow Adventists. So Joanna has now decided to go all the way with Jesus. The enemy is trying to stop her in every way. But she is completely sold out for Jesus. Joanna used to be angry, but now she's found the Lord again. She may get upset, but she's no longer angry when people are nasty. Joanna wants to live her life so much like Jesus that her co-workers and others will see the Jesus in her and want to be like her. Joanna Miller. Praise God. We thank God for her testimony. Amen. Amen. Thank God for her witness. And so, Joanna, because you love Jesus, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the sweet Holy Spirit, that all God's people say. a children's baptismal class and it's virtual for the most part and we've been going throughout the pandemic so if your child has expressed a desire to learn more about God please get in touch with myself or uh, Pastor uh, Elder Graham because this is the best time to teach them about God the world is seeking and is relentless in making sure they indoctrinate our children with things that are not of God if your child wants to know about God, do not hesitate. They're not too young. The Holy Spirit is able to guide them in all truth. So I invite you, if they are seeking, the best gift you can ever give them is to give them back to the one who created them. Allow him to guide them. All right. And just to confirm, we are having our baptismal study at 3.50 p.m. this afternoon. For those of you who want to join us, thank you. close this section in prayer. Father God, we thank you for these witnesses. And we pray that their example will inspire someone to take the same step we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. stand with us as we continue worshiping this morning or this afternoon.
We're going to be singing about the name of God, how he died for us, and how after he died, even death couldn't hold him down. And because death couldn't hold him down, now we have access to simply say, Jesus, Father, Lord, help me, and he will be there. So as we sing this song, just meditate on all the times that you simply called out the name of Jesus and how he rescued you.
demons tremble at the name. And, and I don't know if that brings you a little bit of joy, but it, it does for me because you, you see, when you have no trouble, it feels like in your life, I get a little concerned. I know when I'm feeling trouble, I might be doing something right. When Satan's coming after me, I might just be doing something right because he doesn't want what God's about to do through me, through you, to happen. So he comes after us. He attacks us, but thank God, and I'm just going to read a little verse here that, just as a reminder, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, down at verse 55, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, he gives us what? The victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I, I don't know what victory you need today. God knows exactly what you need. God knows exactly what you came in here with. I know a little over 10 years ago, I needed victory over my own life. I tried to take it because I felt worthless. Not, not being connected to God put me in that place. Feeling like I, I had to chase after this and that put me in that place instead of chasing after God my focus shifted into the things of this world and and the things of this world only leads to death saints but Jesus thank God Jesus leads to life his still small voice in those dark moments and I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody right now who might have just tried to do that might have just tried to take your own life but Jesus was speaking to you in the moments that you were drunk All I know is I have my life to thank him for. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here right now. So I'm going to sing. I'm going to shout. You'll have to excuse me just a little bit if I look excited. Because I know where he brought me from. And I'm not going back. I'm never going back. I only see him right now. And I'm only headed to where he is. Because he's won the victory, church.
Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah is the highest praise we can give our God. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. You know, I want to share with us, share with each of us, with myself also, to remember that it doesn't matter what you may be going through. It doesn't matter what voices you may be hear telling you that there's no way out. Yes, yes. Our God is an awesome God. And you may say you don't understand what I'm going through. You may say you don't understand what I don't have. But I'm telling you, our Lord has given us the assurance that nothing, nothing. In Psalms 56 verse 9, he says, when I cry unto you, when I cry, this I know that my enemies must turn back because God is for me. And I'm going to tell you, don't be fooled. Your enemy is not the person beside you. Your enemy is not the one you can see. Your enemy is the enemy of our Lord and Savior. So I need you to know that God is with us. And I want to invite you to come near with me and let us pray. Just approach the throne of grace knowing that there's no weapons that can be formed against you that will prosper. This is a real battle we are fighting. We can't see the enemy of our souls. But God has delivered us when he rose from that grave. So join me as we kneel and as we pray. Our Father, our Father which art in heaven, holy, holy be unto your most precious name. Oh, Father God, Oh, Father God, as we come into your presence, as we know that your presence is here, you've never left us. God, we ask, O oh Lord, that you search our hearts, O oh God. Search us, Father, because, God, we are wretched and wicked and we don't even know it. We need you and you alone. So, Father, may your kingdom come. In our hearts, may your will be done, O oh Father. We ask, O oh Lord, that you make us holy dying. It is impossible for us to do anything without your presence, O oh God, because in your presence is power. In your presence is joy. In your presence we find all that we need, O oh God. So Lord, give us a desire to desire you. Let our minds be fixed on you, oh God. We desire you, but God, we are weak. We need you. So we're inviting you to come into our hearts. We're inviting you to remove everything that is not of you, oh God. We give you permission. We consent, oh God. As you, you allow your Holy Spirit to transform us by the renewing of our minds. Father, we ask for your divine outpouring of your Holy Spirit right now in this place. Father God, arrest the consciousness of each and every person that is gathered here or who is listening. Father God, we know that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But you have given us the assurance of your words that the gates of hell will not prevail. Father God, you have sent your only son and you have given us a pathway so we can be reunited. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that your will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray for those that are sick among us, those that are struggling with physical and mental illnesses, oh God. We know, God, that you are the healer and nothing is impossible for you. So we are asking, oh God, that you right every crooked ways, shut down every portals of entry, oh God. We are thanking you to serve notice on the enemy, to move back and push back the force of darkness, oh God, and shine your light into the hearts of your people cramp and cripple and just destroy every plans oh God open the minds oh Lord move the veil of darkness from their eyes that they will see that they are fearfully and wonderfully made and that you alone who are able to save 
Father God, we ask that you touch the marriages. We ask that you touch our youth, oh God. Father, you said in your words that God will contend with those who contend with us and you will save our children. And we believe by faith, God, that even when we can't see the outcome, because you said we walk by faith, we know, God, that your, your word cannot come back void. So we're asking for supernatural, abundant overflow of your presence in the lives of our youth, oh God. Invigorate a right mind, a right spirit. God, let them detest the things that are evil. God, give them a mind to yearn after you, oh God, because we know this is not a battle that we can fight without you. So let your will be done. We pray this afternoon for our pastor. Pastor Rose, he brings the word. Father God, take the coal from an altar and it touches lips and pour out your Holy Spirit as supernatural abundant upon him. Father God, let every word that he speaks, every thought that he has directly from your throne of grace. Father God, we ask that you go before him. Touch every crooked ways, oh God. Shut down every portal, God, and let your word find fertile soil in the lives and the hearts of your people, that they will be renewed in their mind and transformed in their lives because you have come. You said you have anointed him to set the captives free. And so God, have your way today and let your will be done. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing. We thank you for your son shed blood. We say glory and honor be unto you. And we praise your most matchless name in Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Those who are in-house in and those joining us online and those who will see this in the near future, we welcome you. And for those who are joining us virtually, you know the drill. Some of you go ahead and like our page. If you've not yet done so, subscribe to our page. Go ahead and share our page with someone else. Go ahead and become a digital disciple, electronic evangelist. We thank God that our God is not confined to a building. Amen. We can connect with Him 
wherever we are. I was so delighted to be part of the experience today, seeing our young people give their lives to Jesus. I love preaching, but I'm more excited about baptizing. <laughs> more excited about seeing folks be born again. Pastors Jen and Kevin are administering other places today, or as I see it, they have abandoned me. <laughs> well, uh, just joking, they go with my blessings, the share of their time, of their talents, to expand the kingdom. This is the time of year when the Western world, though steep in secularism and postmodernism, turns its attention, albeit for a brief moment, to that hill far away, once stood that old rugged cross. And at all this season called Easter is fraught with elements of paganism, the cross of Calvary still looms large. Renowned Christian writer Ellen G. White in her seminal book on the life of Christ, Desire of Ages, page 83 wrote, you can put it there guys, she wrote that it would be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in contemplation of the life of Christ. We should take it point by point and let the imagination grasp each scene, especially the closing ones. And as we thus dwell upon His great sacrifice for us, our confidence in Him will be more constant. Our love will be quickened. We shall be more deeply imbued with His Spirit. She says, if we would be saved at last, we must learn the lesson of pen penitence and humiliation at the foot of the cross. And so, neighbor, we turn our gaze to Calvary. This weekend, we review and rehearse the poignant scenes that were played out there, scenes that dramatized God's amazing grace. Because there on that hill, on Golgotha's hill, our Lord died. He died to demonstrate God's undying love for us. Our Lord died. He died on a cross, suspended between heaven and earth, sandwiched between two thieves, hoisted before his grieving mother and an ungracious crowd. Jesus became a spectacle, not only to his disappointed friends and delightful foes, but he became a spectacle to his Father and the entire universe. As we contemplate Calvary today, we'll do so beneath the caption, the cross, from shame to glory. The cross, from shame, to glory. Our focus text is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14, reading from the New King James Version's rendition of Scripture says, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I read again for emphasis, but God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. This is the Word of God, and I believe it. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the presence and moving of your Spirit in the service thus far. And as we continue now in the worship service with a study of your Word, I pray that you will arrest every attention, remove every distraction, 
and use this feeble mortal clay to share words of hope, words of truth we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul wrote, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Now, it is very instructive to note that this verse, verse 14, is part of a larger context in which the apostle seeks to push back against a group that had dogged him during his ministry, a group that had questioned his credibility and raised doubt about his credentials as an apostle. This group had invaded the church at Galatia. They were known as the Judaizers, the Judaizers. This was a group of Jewish believers who were legalistic in their approach to Christianity. A group that taught that some of the Jewish rites and rituals were still required and applicable, especially for Gentile converts to Christianity. They had what I'd like to call a Jesus plus approach to faith. A Jesus plus approach to faith. For them, it was Jesus plus some of the Jewish rites and rituals. And may I submit to you today that there are some Christians who still believe that when it comes to salvation, that is Jesus plus. That is Jesus plus the Sabbath that saves them. That is Jesus plus uh, veg vegetarianism or veganism that saves them. That, that is Jesus plus something else. But I want to make it clear, and Paul emphasizes this in Galatians, that it's not Jesus plus, it's Jesus period. Let me say it again. That it's not Jesus plus, it's Jesus period. Listen, neighbor, you can't eat enough vegetarian grillers to go to heaven. You can uh, 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 moderate your dress to go to heaven. The reality is that all our righteousness is, is as filthy rags. You and I will be saved in heaven simply because we believed and held on to Jesus. Now, in this particular instance, for the Judaizers, it was... Jesus plus circumcision. Jesus plus circumcision. And, 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 and let us just go back up to verse 12 of our chapter and read on down to verse 15, guys, as, we, as this, I believe, will help us to appreciate our focus verse, uh, verse 14. So beginning at verse 12, Paul says, As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may suffer pers only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. In other words, Paul is saying that these folks who are seeking to compel you to, 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 to engage in this Jewish ritual, they're doing so to make a good showing in the flesh. And by the way, they're doing so so that, so that they will not have to deal with the, the, the implications of accepting the cross of Christ. Because around this time, it was still not cool to be a Christian. Hello. But notice, he says, that they desire to make a good showing in the flesh. That is, they are more concerned about the externals. Some folks who believe that the externals are really what matter. And they shy away from the deeper stuff. Anybody can put on a good suit, but it takes a different character to have a good heart beneath that good suit. Amen? Anybody can look good on a weekend and look good in church, 
But there is, there is, there's a different dynamic when you are dealing with people as you interact with them. You see, that which is on the inside eventually will come on the outside. And for the child of God, the emphasis cannot be on the externals. You see, it is the emphasis must be on the heart connection with Jesus. Because if your heart is connected to Jesus, it will impact every aspect of your life. Paul says, look at verse 13. I find it very curious. He says in verse 14, For not even those who are circumcised keep the law. But they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. These folks who are making this requirement of you, these folks who have set these righteousness standards, the reality is not even they themselves are meeting that standard. There is nothing that say a turn off to me than, than, than church folks who have all these requirements that they want to impose on other people, but when you check them out closely, they're not even fulfilling said requirements. Hello? No, not at plantation. Amen. Amen. They want to do this for a show. They want to boast in your flesh. They want to boast externally. But, but, but then our verse, but God forbid, Paul says, that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Verse 15, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a what? But a new creation. Paul kept coming back to the cross while the legalist boasted in circumcision. Paul boasted in a crucified and risen Savior. Paul glorified in the cross. Now, 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 neighbor, don't get it twisted. This does not mean that he glorified in the brutality or the suffering of the cross. And in my humble opinion, one of the disfavors that Mel Gibson did in his Passion of the Christ was to focus on the brutality of the experience as if it was that brutality that brought about our, our salvation. Paul is not seeking to glorify or glory in the brutality or the suffering of the cross. Paul was not looking at the cross as a piece of wood on which a criminal died. He was not looking at it as an instrument of Roman execution. Rather, he was looking at the cross of Christ and glorying in it. Notice, he was looking at the cross of Christ and glorying in it. Now, let me share with you three reasons. How many? How many? Now, let me remind you, um, if you want my preaching to be short and succinct, you got to respond. If you want my preaching to be long-winded, just nod. <laughs> Let me show you three reasons for Paul to glory in the cross. Number one, he knew the person of the cross. Number two, he knew the power of the cross. Number three, he knew the purpose of the cross. So he knew the person, power, and purpose. Say it with me, person, power, and purpose. One more time person, power, and purpose. Let's look at the person of the cross. When you read the epistle to the church at Galatia, you will observe that over 45 times in this letter, Paul mentions Jesus Christ. And when you do the math, it's about a third of the verses that contain some reference to Jesus. You see, ever since their meeting on that Damascus road, the person of Jesus Christ captivated Paul. He was more than just enamored by him. The apostle had a personal and intimate relationship with Jesus. And it was Christ. And the relationship he had with Christ who made the cross that was an object of suffering, an object of shame that made this glorious to Paul. 
Now, this is a departure from his previous life. Because in his early years as a Jewish rabbi, Paul had much to glory in. According to Galatians chapter 1, 13 and 14 and Philippians chapter 3, 1 to 10, Paul had a lot of things he could boast about. He could boast about the fact that he was Hebrew of Hebrews, that he was of a certain tribe. He could boast about that he was learned. He was boast about that he was passionate for Judaism and, and how he went to get the Christians. There were a lot of things that Paul could glory about, but when he met Jesus, he said that all this self-glory turned to mere refuge, that is, he counted it as garbage. For Paul, nothing else was greater than that relationship with Jesus. His only claim to fame was that he knew the person of the cross. What happened that weekend was not just some historical event, but it was personal because he had a relationship with Jesus. You see, the legalists did not glory in the cross of Christ because they did not glory in Christ. Let me say it again. The legalists did not glory in the cross of Christ because they did not glory in Christ. They gloried in Moses. They gloried in themselves. They did not really know the person of the cross. Let me suggest that it is possible to have the name Christian and not know Jesus. It's possible to go through the rituals. It's possible to know when to stand, when to sit. It's possible to know when church, the church door opens. It's possible uh, to know how to respond and, and, and to get those nice, how you doing, happy Sabbath, isn't God great? Get all the church cliches down, but not know Jesus. Paul says that what happened that faithful weekend was not about some criminal dying on a cross it was not about some would-be messiah laying his life down what happened was personal what happened was the son of god himself giving his life for the world what happened was personal for paul he knew the person of the cross the second reason I submit why Paul gloried in the cross was that he knew the power of the cross. Now, to Saul, hear me out here, to Saul, the learned Jewish rabbi, the teaching of a sacrifice on a Roman cross as fundamental to salvation was utterly preposterous was downright ridiculous the, the fact that, that someone dying on a cross, uh, uh, on a Roman cross, could be fundamental to salvation. Now, Paul had no doubt that the Messiah would come, but, 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 but not that he would come to die, and not that he would die on a cursed Roman cross. This thinking, this approach to faith, had no place in Saul's theology. You see, the cross in that day was the ultimate example of weakness and shame. There was no power there. This was no symbol of power. Yet Saul of Tarsus, listen to me well, yet Saul of Tarsus experienced the power of the cross and became Paul the apostle. So now the cross ceased to be a stumbling block to him, became instead the very foundation stone of his message. For Paul, the fact that Jesus died on the cross, what he did on the cross is fundamental to Christianity. Because Christ died for our sins. 
For Paul, the cross meant liberty. It meant liberty from self. It meant liberty from the flesh. It meant liberty from the world. Paul knew that in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the power of God is released to give believers deliverance and victory. He knew that we no longer, it is not no longer we who live, but it's Jesus who lives in us and through us. The cross has power to change lives. And one of the things why I'm always excited about evangelism, Elder Stevens, is, is to see the experience of change lives. When you start an evangelistic series and, and people are coming and you, you see them coming at different stages and different phases of life, some of them, their lives are so messed up, they blush to be even in church. But as the series wears on and the Holy Spirit speaks to their heart and, and you see that person take their stand for Jesus. And you see them in the baptismal pool and folks who knew, who know about them and know their past. When they see that man, that woman being transformed, they're amazed. Listen to me, even in 2022, there is still power in the cross of Jesus. Paul not only believed in the person of the cross, he believed in the power of the cross. He believed as we yield to Jesus, we'll have victory over the world and victory over the flesh. He knew that this power did not, was not available in the law, that the law could not give man victory over self. The law could not give victory, the man victory over flesh. So you see, while the, the legalist inflates the ego and flatters the flesh and pleases the world, the true believer, according to Paul, crucifies all three on the cross. Because Paul knew the power of the cross. Even as I look out on this audience today, I know of a fact because I know some of your stories, not all of your stories, but I know that there are those of you who are in church today because of the power of the cross. Not because of some erudite uh, teacher, not because of some powerful preacher, but you're here today because of the power of the cross. So Paul knew the person of the cross. He knew the power of the cross. But he also knew the purpose of the cross. Paul knew that through the cross, watch this, Jesus would bring into the world a new people of God. Listen to me carefully. That was not based on a singular nation or group of people. He knew that through the cross, God would bring a people drawn from every nation, every tongue, and every people. Because of the work of redemption wrought through the cross, God's people would not be confined to any particular group. You see, <laughs> it doesn't matter your ethnicity. It doesn't matter your nationality. It doesn't matter your mother tongue. The cross brings us together. Through the cross, Jesus says, we're all children of God. Through the cross, God now calls both Jews and Gentiles to himself to create this Israel of God. Some of you can recall how Jesus had said to the Jewish leaders in Matthew 21, 43, he said to them, listen, fellows, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And Peter identifies this nation as the family of God. Peter describes it this way, 1 Peter 2, 9. Peter says, but you are a chosen generation, 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Doesn't matter where you're from. You see, for the child of God, his somebodyness is not based on his bank account. Hello. His somebodiness is not based on his ethnicity. Hello. His somebodiness is not based on, on, on his college degrees. For the child of God, his somebodiness is based on the cross. Because of what Jesus did, we are a chosen generation. Because of what Jesus did, we're a royal priesthood. Because of what Jesus did, we are a holy nation. Doesn't matter where you once call home, whether you're from Brazil or from Portugal or where you're from Costa Rica or you're from some South Africa or from Jamaica or Barbados or Haiti. Doesn't matter if you're from North Carolina or Kentucky or Wisconsin. Through the cross, become a holy nation of God. A new creation. The body of Christ. You see, through the cross, the old creation that was headed by Adam and ended in failure, we now have a new creation through the cross headed by Christ, and that is going to succeed. Because of the cross, new believers are now, are now Abraham's seed, and here's according to the promise. Because of the cross, New believers now experience a circumcision of the heart that's far more effective than physical circumcision. Because of the cross, you and I are brought back into fellowship with God. Where is my... Uh, as I said in the first service, if the service is prolonged, blame him. <laughs> He's going to play me down. <laughs> but as we bring this to a close, as we bring this to a close, the world is reflecting on what happened in, there in Calvary. It is a historical fact. The debate is not about the fact that it, David that it happened his, historically that's not the debate the debate is about whether or not Jesus rose again that's the debate it's not whether or not he was crucified on a Roman cross and that 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 that, that is that has been authenticated by by outside sources outside of, the, of scripture the debate is did he come back to life you know Alex that if Jesus did not come back to life, what we're doing is in vain. If Jesus did not come back to life, then our faith, according to Paul, would be futile. But let me remind you and let me announce that no grave could keep his body down. Then up from the grave he rose with a mighty triumph are his foes. Let me declare that Jesus lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know, he holds the future. And life, even in 2022, is worth the living because Jesus lives. I want to thank God for the cross. How about you? Stand with me to your feet in affirmation. Uh, the praise team is going to sing. Even as we make also an appeal to those who are watching online and those who will watch in the future. The information is there. You can reach out to us as we want to journey with you and encourage you towards faith you see friends it's not Jesus plus it's Jesus period
praise team will sing. I'll come back and we'll close. I just need you to just meditate on how much God thought you were worth it. Just thought you were worth it. Worth saving from death itself. That he gave his life on the cross so it ought to make us celebrate just a little bit. You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving. Come on, let's all say. So you came. So you came and changed my life. You thought, life. I, you was thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up so inside. You Time. 
time I think about that, it's, it really sends a jolt up my spine. And so many of our young people are beset with, with self-esteem issues, allowing the culture to define their worth. But, 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 but you were worth him dying for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. In prayer, Father, we thank you so much for that sacrifice. That's the only claim we make. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. We can't work our way in. We accept by faith what Jesus did on that cross. How he sure turned that which was an instrument of shame to glory we leave here today with the assurance that what Jesus did on the cross is more than sufficient we pray for that man that woman that boy that girl struggling to make that decision that through the ministry of your Holy Spirit Continue to speak to their heart until they make that surrender to you. We leave this place, but never your presence. Rest, remain, abide with us. Go with us and use us for your glory, we ask. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Please be seated as we get escorted out. It's just been a high Sabbath today. Going God, knowing that he thought you were worth it. Amen? Amen. We're going to sing you out. Visual team, we're going to go. We have overcome. If you feel it in your spirit, you can just jump up and sing with us. Sing with us a little bit. Thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph in His name. Thanks be to God, who always causes us to win. Yeah. Thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph in His name. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We have overcome.
he's given you the victory, put a smile on your face. Put a pep in yourself. You might lead a clap a little harder and just say, we got the victory. We got the victory and everything will be all right, all right. Until we live stream again, we encourage you to visit PlantationSDA.tv for more uplifting content. Here at Plantation Seventh-day Adventist Church, we believe strongly in the power of prayer. And so we ask you to drop by PlantationSDA.org and let us know how we can pray for you. And if you're ever in the Plantation, Florida area, please stop by and say hello. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon.